special. You know? I said to all of my managers, I just want to do it here. I said, you may not be able to get the cars here. I don't care. The place is 100% full. And I know a lot of you had to walk a long distance. To have you here is great. Thank you. Thank you. Unbelievable. You know, <laughs> thank you. I want to start by thanking the fire department. They have a lot of people in here, I have to tell you. And I want to really thank the fire department and the police. And they're here someplace. Hey, fellas, come up here. Come up. Come up here. Come here. Get up here. These guys have been so incredible today with the traffic and everything. And I just want to thank our police department. They have been absolutely incredible. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. Nobody going to mess with them. Look at this. Thank you very much, fellas. They don't want to leave the stage. They'll never leave. And the fire department, likewise, they've been incredible. So thank you very much. You know, what a crowd. Is there nothing like Miami? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing like Miami. Incredible. So, when I was a little boy, my father always loved Durrell. Always. And he said, come on, son. And he didn't play golf. He was a worker. He didn't want to play golf. He didn't have time to play golf. And he had a beautiful swing, actually, but he played very little. Almost never. But he used to love coming here. And it was the hottest resort in the country. This is a long time ago. I won't say how many years because I like to think I'm a very young person. But a long time ago, at the beginning. And he would say, let's go, and would walk around. And who would have ever thought that someday I'd own this place, right? Who would ever thought it? Who would ever thought? But what happened is Doral is very interesting. It had five courses, almost 800 acres, right smack in the middle of Miami. Incredible location, right near the airport, you're 10 minutes away, and always did well. It was always one of the top places. And then, sadly, Wall Street got a hold of it. The original developer, boo, 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 boo. Oh, they're going to pay tax, don't worry about it. They're friends of mine, but they'll pay. They're going to pay. Don't worry. But you know, you know, what happened is it became a money thing. And it was like playing cards, bing, 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 and they traded. Every year and every three years, somebody would make a lot of money. It was like musical chairs, like this. And they'd sell it. Then somebody would own it for three or four or five years, Wall Street, and they'd sell it, make a lot of money. Always made a lot of money. Everybody made a lot of money with Doral, except for the last group that I bought it for. You know, it was like musical chairs. And I bought it. And when I bought it, I bought it from a smart group, but the market had crashed. You know all about the crash. And I got it for the right price. I signed for X dollars, a lot of money, 170 million. But then I said, you know, maybe I can make a better deal before I close. So I went into closing with Ivanka. We know Ivanka, we love Ivanka, right? Right? I went in with Ivanka and I said, watch Ivanka. Let's see if we can make $20 million. Sure. So I have a contract for 100. I never told this story actually. I have a contract for 170, and I had all these good-looking, brilliant young men in front of me, and they all wore suspenders without the jacket, right? You know, the jackets were behind the seat. They were all like Tom Cruise, and you you couldn't get better central casting. In fact, all of that media. Look at that media back there. Look at these people. Wow. No, they're all right. I, I, I'm going to tell you some media stories. Over. So, no, but the central casting, the red suspenders, handsome, beautiful, smart, top school. They were going to Harvard. They go to Wharton. They go to Stanford. And I said, I want to show off to my daughter. Does that make sense? You know, I had this great daughter. So I go in and she said, Dad, they're not going to cut. You have a contract for 170. I said, well, that's right. So does Iran have a contract? That doesn't mean we can't make it much better. You know, right? So, so what happens, I tell these guys, there's no way I'm paying $170 million. I'm not doing it. 
I'm not doing it. They said, you have to pay it. You have to pay it, beautiful guys. You have to pay it. You really have to. And I said, there's no way. That's all right. USA. 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 Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. You can get him out, but don't hurt him. We don't want anyone getting hurt. Don't get hurt. But that's what freedom of speech, I mean, it's all freedom of speech, you know that. You know that. Right. Great life. It's a great life. A great life. That's all right. That's what the country's all about. I mean, we got to be able to speak and every once in a while be a little bit disrupted, but it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. So let me just finish the story. Thank you. Too bad we had to throw them out. But sometimes you have to throw people out, right? You have to do it. You have to do it. Look at that side. Look at the size of that sign. Can you believe that? Wow. Thank you. Beautiful. I think I'll tell my people, let's bring that home. And by the way, we have plenty of time tonight. It's gonna, I'm here all night. You know, you know, tomorrow night we're in Jacksonville, Florida. We have at least 15,000 people, probably 20,000 people tomorrow night. So it's going to be good. Because there's things happening. So anyway. So let me tell you, because it has to do with the country. So I go into the room, I say, fellas, the contract is not right. This place is in much worse shape than you told me. I've gone all over. You have to have it signed first before you can do this. I've gone all over, and it's not fair. What you're selling me, you shouldn't be selling. I'm not closing this deal. I'll give you a hundred. Remember, I want to impress my daughter. The art of the deal. And, and I meant it. Nothing wrong. I said it wasn't in the shape that you're supposed to be in. You know. legendary place and the decision was do we fix it do we fix it you know by the way you know the saddest part you have people like that, there's a total of probably three over there and five over there, and they'll be the story tomorrow, not the thousands of people that love our country. Amazing. It's amazing. No, no, the sad part, I had an incident like this two weeks ago. We had 9,000 people in an arena, and we had five people protesting, they became the story, it's too bad. All right, they're gone. You know, we have, we'll have little pockets, little pockets. But it is a shame. I mean, it just shows. So we have thousands of people, and you'll have three or four people protest, and tomorrow morning, protesters at Trump. It's one of those. So then I had a decision to make, 
And the decision was, do we give it the B job, the C job, the A job? What do we do? And we gave it the A plus job. And we built something that we love. We built something that we love. Really love. And what happened, I let them get out. Go ahead, get them out. See, the first group, I was nice. Oh, take your time. The second group, I was pretty nice. The third group, I'll be a little more violent. And the fourth group, I'll say, get the hell out of here. So, so I had to make a decision. What do we do with Doral? Do we give it the really best job? and basically rip it down and build a new magnificent place because it was really old, really tired, the bones were tired, the whole place. You people know a lot of you are from the area. And I said, we got to do it right. We got to do it right. And we basically, as you know, new clubhouses, this room new. This room is one of the great ballrooms. We have five ballrooms. We have 700 rooms. We have the golf courses are world class. And we wanted to do it right. And a man just came up to me outside. He hadn't been here in 25 years, and it was very interesting. I won't say he was an older fellow, but he was an older fellow. And he said, you know, Mr. Trump, this place is magnificent. And by the way, David Fader, wherever the hell you are, David, where are you, David? David Fader is a, our president and general manager. He has done some incredible job. And this is now the hottest resort of its kind anywhere in the United States. It's bringing tremendous business to the Miami area and the Doral area and it's become the hottest place so it's really good in fact the PGA Tour just gave us a 10-year extension on the tournament which they never do so that's how good it is they never do that so it's become a really really successful place but this gentleman came up to me and he said and it was so simple and yet it was so beautiful he said Mr. Trump I haven't been back here in 25 years it was in very very bad shape I actually bought it out of bankruptcies from some people that I know very well that are killers, but they didn't really know what they were doing in this case. And I said, well, that's very nice of you. You know, Mr. Trump, if you could do the same for the United States as you did here, it would be unbelievable. Unbelievable. True. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. And you know, in its own way, Doing it for the United States might be easier than what we had to do here, it's as crazy as it sounds. So, and that's what we have to do. We owe $19 trillion. We're desperate. Our infrastructure is, is in such trouble. Such trouble. Isn't this more fun than having like a normal deal, right? I, I mean, supposing we had like a normal speech, we talk and talk and talk, the evening ends, we go home, go to sleep. This is more fun, right? You know, you know they used to call it the silent majority, but they don't use that anymore because frankly, it's no longer silent because we're not going to take this crap anymore. We're not going to take it anymore. We are not going to take it anymore. So, it is true. You know, for years you haven't heard that term silent majority. I don't know, it was a long time ago and people thought it was politically incorrect. And I started using it, but then I started realizing, honestly, it's not silent. There's nothing silent. Everywhere I go, we have the biggest crowds. I mean, we left Oklahoma 15, 20,000. Dallas, Texas, Mark Cuban's arena, where the Mavericks play. We had 20,000. Mobile, Alabama, 35,000. I go to Iowa. I go to New Hampshire. No matter where, South Carolina. Unbelievable crowds all over. And there's love in the room. There's just love in the room. It's incredible. It's incredible. And you know, 
And there's nothing silent about it. We're sick and tired of incompetent people running our government. So I did something today that was quite exciting. Although I think actually owning Doral is more exciting, but that's okay. But I did something today that was interesting. And it got a lot of press. I see it's got a lot of press. They have these things called super PACs. Nobody knows what the hell they are, what they mean. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And all of the candidates have super PACs. And they're controlled to a large extent by investors. They're controlled by lobbyists, special interests, countries, countries. You know, when you wonder why our politicians make such bad deals with foreign countries and with other deals, it's because they're totally controlled by people that benefit even if our country doesn't benefit. It's true. It's true. And the super PACs are a disaster. You have Jeb Bush. Did anybody ever hear of Jeb Bush? Yeah. You have Jeb Bush has $125 million. I, I honestly, I don't think it's going to help him. I'll be honest. If it helps him, then I can't figure the whole deal out. Hey, look, I used to be one of those guys that would, like, give a lot of money, a lot of money. I know the lobbyists. And, you know, when they come up to me and say, we want to give you money, when you go to number one, everybody wants to give you money. It's incredible. But they don't care so much about anything other than the companies they represent. They don't care so much, and some do, but most don't. They want influence. They want power. They want to take these people like little puppets and they want to say you do as I told you because I gave you five million dollars and you better do it well nobody's giving me anything okay anything nothing and so what happened is I noticed over the last couple of weeks everybody's forming a Trump super PAC I'm not forming they're all over the place I thought we had four then I heard we had five then I heard we had eight then I heard we had nine or ten. Now, I don't know. Are they good or is it a scam? Because, you know, some of them, some of them, seriously, some of them, I assume, are like legitimate people. They love Trump. They want to do things. They'll go and do whatever they're supposed to do. And you don't talk to them. You know, they're supposed to be like independent. And others, I would imagine they probably pay themselves salaries. And who the hell knows what happens with all the money? So we did something today. That was very, all I know is I haven't gotten any of this money. None of it. I feel guilty about that. I feel a little foolish, actually. And we wrote notices and notifications, sent them all to the government, to the people, to everybody, that we don't want super PACs, that we don't want anything to do with them, to close them up, ideally, hopefully to give the money back, whatever money's raised. I mean, I saw the other day in one of the programs, two young, nice-looking guys, big fans of Trump, I think, and they opened an art of the deal. I think it's called the Art of the Deal Super PAC after my book, right? And by the way, we're having a new book come out on November 3rd. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great. But the Art of the Deal Super PAC. And they look very good. And they talked about we love Trump, where they're going to do this. And, you know, probably it's true. I don't want to take any chance. I don't want it. I don't want any help. I don't want... The one, I do, the one thing we do, people send in small donations, like small ones. There's a woman, $7.50 with about a four-page letter. Another woman... $50, $30, $90, $250. But that I love because, number one, you can't send it back. How do you send a letter back to a woman who loves the country, who's giving a lot of money? That's like giving a million dollars to a rich person. How do you send the $7.50 back? You can't. You can't. There's no letter you can write. It's true. There's no letter that you can write to that woman to say, we don't want your money, okay? So that's the only stuff. And we take it. And it comes in, and that's the only stuff we want. But we don't want any of the, you know, the big money. We don't want any big money. And so today, I did something, started getting big press, actually, this evening, because nobody's ever done it. I disclaimed and disavowed all super PACs. I don't want any of them. I don't want their money. I don't want anything. And I said very strongly, when we wrote the letter, I told my attorneys and everybody, that I think every candidate running right now for the presidency should disavow their super PACs. They should disavow their super PACs. You know, and these super PACs are really running the campaigns. They're running the campaigns. For instance, I hear in Iowa 
that there's going to be a merger of Ben Carson, and I like him, he's a nice guy. They're going to merge the Super PAC, he's got two of them, and they're going to run, and they've been running his campaign, and he doesn't hardly have to go there. And I'm saying, what am I? Why? I'm not allowed to do anything? It's really unfair. But I think they shouldn't be allowed to do that. I don't know if they're, if they're allowed to do that. But how do you have super PACs running campaigns? Now, and then when you think of it, so you have these super PACs with millions and millions of dollars, and they're running a campaign. Do you think those people that are running those super PACs and those people that are giving tremendous money to the super PACs, do you think they control those candidates 100%? The answer is yes. Yes. And I don't want any confusion. And I said it. I don't want any confusion. People were calling, well, you have all these super PACs. Therefore, I said, I don't even know who these people are. So here's what's happening. All candidates disavow your super PACs. Run for office and be proud. But disavow your super PACs. Drop them. Drop them. And ideally, give the money back to the people that put it up there. That's what you should do. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But to me, it's very important. The super PAC thing is a terrible thing that's happening in this country. It's a terrible, terrible thing. And it's controlling our politicians. They're puppets. It's controlling our politicians. I mean, Bush had somebody the other day going to Berlin, Germany to pick up money. Berlin, Germany. What do you think Germany gets out of that one? Okay. Other people have tremendous amounts of money put up, and we can't have it anymore. We have to bring honesty back to politics, folks. Got to do it. So, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, a very interesting thing happened, very sad today. Very, very sad. Because you know the press is very dishonest, right? We know. Not all of them. Not all of them, but we have them all back there. Look at those cameras. Look at those suckers. Boy, they are all covering. They are all covering. They are covering Trump, and they're covering you. And they'll all be with us tomorrow night in Jacksonville. And by the way, if you can, it's going to be wild. Come back up. It's going to be wild. So, it's going to be wild. So, a crazy thing happened. I love polls. Everybody knows I love polls. And they said, I wonder what would happen if Trump wasn't number one in the poll. And somebody said, oh, if he wasn't number one, maybe he'd drop out of the race. Believe me, I'm not dropping out of anything. That I can tell you. Never, ever. I'm not dropping out of anything. So, poll came out, big one, ABC Washington Post, that has been killing everybody. It's, it's a national poll that was on Friday. We're killing. 32, think of it. 32, you know, you notice every week, I started at three. First, well, that was slightly before I ran, but because nobody thought I was gonna run. Nobody thought I was gonna run. You know, they all said, he's never gonna run. If he runs, it doesn't matter. What does he know about politics, right? I've only dealt in politics all my life, that's all. But, so it started at three, it went to eight, went to 12, went to 16, went to, now, as of Friday, nationally, 32, and then another one came out. Another one came out last week, Reuters, listen to this one, 33 to 15, 15, 15 is, is Ben Carson, he's in second place, but they kept saying, oh, if Trump ever loses, because you know what, I mean, I'm getting spoiled, from the time I ran, and from the time I went up, when I was at 12, they said, all right, he's peaked, he's peaked, you know, you're hearing the same crap, right? Then it goes to 16, 17 the next week, well, that's his plateau, he's plateaued, the word plateau, they love that word. So he's plateaued. Then the next week it went to 21. Well, that's it. That's it. By the way, 21's not bad when you have 17 people, right? 21. You know, if I'm a card player, I will rest on 21 with 17 people. I'm not losing. So I was number one in 20. Then it went to 25. Oh, this is it. You know, these talking heads. These are among the dumbest human beings I've ever seen. I'm sure. Sure. Some of them. Some of them. Are and some of them are coming along. I mean, some of them were so terrible and so nasty, and now they're coming along. They're, I mean, they're becoming like, I don't know about fans, but they're saying, a poll just came out, we're 81% to win. I mean, can you believe it? I didn't know that. 81%. Who would have thought this? Rasmussen, Rasmussen. 
I, the Rasmussen, I, so I'm walking up here, one of my people stopped me, I said, excuse me, I've got to make a speech. Oh no, I'd like to talk to you. I said, what do you want to talk about? They're introducing me. And Rasmussen just said, nationally, I'm beating Hillary. Just came out. Just came out. Just came out. Hey, what's the beat? So now I said, I'm glad they stopped me, right? I'm glad they stopped. So anyway, but a bad thing happened. Bad. So look, I mean, I just wrote down a few of them, and then I'll tell you what was bad. So I'm winning New Hampshire by like 22 points. New Hampshire, unbelievable, great. I'm winning New Jersey by a lot. A lot. And Chris Christie's a friend of mine. But I'm at 29, he's at five. That's a lot, that's a big difference. I'm winning Florida, I'm beating Bush and Rubio. Right? Right? I'm winning Nevada by a fortune, but here's what I like the best. Nevada, tremendous Hispanic population. I'm winning with the Hispanics. Big. Winning with the Hispanics. And I keep telling everybody, I'm going to win with the Hispanics. I, I say it to everybody. I love the Hispanics. I have thousands of Hispanics. Thank you. I love you too. I love you too. True. I have thousands of Hispanics working for me all over. At this place, I have, you know, 1,800, 1,900 employees and many Hispanics. They're unbelievable people, unbelievable workers. I love them. I love them. I love them. And they know. They're smart. They know. I'm bringing jobs back from China, from Japan, from all these countries. I'm bringing them back. And nobody else can do that. I know the people I'm running against, including Hillary. No, they can't do that. They can't do that. They can't do that. I mean, honestly, Ben Carson cannot do that, folks. I hate to tell you. Cannot do it. Can't do it. They're not going to do it. So here's the story. So winning in Florida, winning in Texas, okay? Winning in Texas, big. Winning in South Carolina, winning in North Carolina. Winning in Ohio against Kasich, which is interesting. And he's a good man. He's a good man, but I'm winning in Ohio against Kasich. I'm winning in Massachusetts. Listen to this one. This is one I love. Maybe, I don't even know why. Massachusetts. I'm at 48. 48. 48. And second place is 12. Boy, I'm going to have to do a really, really bad crash to blow that one. So, what happens? Let me give you the bad news, right? And this has been going on now for 100 days. Did you sell, uh, we, they were celebrating on television. 100 days on the top of every poll. Think of it. <laughs> 100 days on the top of every single poll, national and state. Okay, that's the good news, right? Let me give you the bad news. The press was so happy. You had, oh. I love Iowa, and I honestly think those polls are wrong. I'm Presbyterian. I'm a great Christian. True. True. They say in the poll, I'm the best leader. They say in the poll, I'm the best on the economy by far. It's not like a, by two points, it's like by triple. How, how important is the economy, right? Remember, it's the economy. Remember that? It's the economy, stupid. I mean, it's the economy. So I'm leading on the economy. I'm leading with men, big league. I'm not doing as well with women. Will you help me? What's going on? What is... Which I don't... Look, nobody respects women more than me. Greatest person ever was my mother, believe me. The greatest. Nobody's going to be better or do more for women than Donald Trump. That I can tell you. That I can tell you. And I think they know it. I'd rather do well with women than with men. With men, I'm doing great. I'm killing everybody. With women, eh, not terrible, but I could do better. So, so what happens, what happens is the poll comes out, right? And the press was so happy. Headline. Now, just so you understand, if I were in first place, it wouldn't even be discussed. Nobody would mention it. 
But here it is all day long. Oh, my head. I turn on the television. Headline. Bigger than Hillary's uh, talk yesterday on Benghazi. So headline. Here's the headline. Headline. The biggest story. You see it. Am I right? Trump falls to second place in Iowa. I said, no way. The press was going crazy. They loved it. They were so happy. I won't mention the names, but you know some of them. You know some of them. We have a breaking story. Donald Trump has fallen to second place behind Ben Carson. We informed Ben, but he was sleeping. No. Donald Trump has fallen to second place. You know, it's funny. You got all these guys. Two people dropped out, right? Perry, you know about that. And you know the governor of Wisconsin. Very nice guy, right? Walker. They both dropped out. They became so vicious to me. They, Perry, he was such a nice guy, like two months ago. He couldn't have been there. He went to Washington to make a speech about me. It was so vicious that those that loved me started crying. <laughs> no, it was vicious. It sent then, and, and we had so many. You had Lindsey Graham. I don't even know the guy. The only time I know him is when he calls me constantly asking for campaign contributions. It's true. He became so vicious and violent. I mean, and every time they get more and more vicious and violent, they go down, down, down. In fact, Lindsey Graham was at five, and he hit me as hard as you can be hit. He said, I don't know anything about the military. What do I know about foreign affairs? Except one thing. I wrote a book in 2000, right? And Joe Scarborough yesterday covered it. I wrote a book in 2000 before the World Trade Center came down. And I said that there's going to be a big attack in this country. And I said probably by somebody named Osama bin Laden. This was before anybody ever heard his name. And I said, it's going to be much worse. You remember the first attack, which was a horrible attack, but it was a small attack by comparison, obviously, to the second one, which was horrendous. The worst attack in the history of our country, worse than Pearl Harbor. At least with Pearl Harbor, they were attacking the military. They weren't attacking innocent civilians, of which many thousands died and are still, are still living in pain and suffering. Not to mention the fire departments, the police departments, and all the guys that had to breathe that air for long periods of time. So, thank you. So I, I have it in the book. Watch Osama bin Laden. And Scarborough goes, whoa, when was that book written? Before the World Trade Center. Whoa, and he's a good guy. He, he was like, he couldn't believe it. And I don't get any credit. They don't give me any credit for it. And then I have Jeb Bush saying, then I have Jeb Bush saying, what does Donald Trump know about the military? Or about... I'm like a smart guy. You know, I'm really smart. But it's amazing. People are talking about it. They should talk about it more because if you read the book, it says Osama bin Laden, the guy. And the reason was he was a terrorist that was getting a lot of notoriety. He made very vicious statements toward our country. And I said, you better watch that guy. And what happened? I think it was 19 months after that, he came back and knocked down and attacked viciously with the lives of the World Trade Center. So in the debate, which every poll said I won, by the way, but these are minor details, forget it. The second debate and the first debate. Drudge, Time Magazine, Slate, everybody, every single poll, online polls, they all say, and believe me, I'm not calling up hundreds of thousands of people, I can tell you. But Jeb said, my brother left us safe. And, and I'm okay with it. But then I said to him, uh, what about the World Trade Center? The biggest attack ever. They should have known about it, and they could have known about it. And I'm not blaming George Bush. I'm not blaming anybody. I could also blame Clinton, right? No. Because in all fairness to Bush, he was only president for about nine months, in all fairness. And Bill Clinton gave a speech, and he knew Osama bin Laden just like I did. And he gave a speech talking about Osama bin Laden. So we can blame Bush. We can blame everybody. I will say this. You know the expression? the buck stops here. Your president, the buck stops here. That's the way it is. 
And it's one of the reasons that I say, and I mean this so strongly, we owe a lot of money, 19 trillion, I told you. But we've got to build up our military so big, so strong, so powerful. <laughs> got to do it. We got to do it. We got to do it. So powerful that nobody is going to mess with us. Nobody. I don't want to use it. I don't want to use it. Nobody, nobody is going to mess. You know, we're working on an airplane right now. I don't know if you've been reading about it. Billions and billions of dollars for one plane. And the test pilots, did you read this story? I love the test pilots. These are great guys. These are seriously good flyers, don't we agree? And they came out of the plane, billions of dollars, and they say, this thing doesn't hold a candle to the old one that we used to fly. It doesn't maneuver as well, it doesn't work. We're talking billions and billions. What are we doing, folks? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? So, so, we need a special leader. We need a special leader. We need a special leader. So, let me just say. So, the headlines blared. I don't believe those polls, by the way. Because both of those pollsters do not like me. I'm telling you. Now, I'm not saying anything that goes on illicitly with polling. Okay? I would never, ever say that. But both of those polling groups do not like me at all. And I disagree. I don't believe it. I was just interviewed. Where is Jake Tapper? Is he here? Jake. Where's Jake? What happened to Jake? No, he's a good man. He just interviewed me. Watch me. Nine o'clock, Sunday morning, Jake Tapper on CNN. What the hell happened to Jake? He's here someplace. He's here someplace. He's a good man. Oh. He's maybe shy. But he's here someplace. But it's good. It's, into, it's 9 o'clock on Sunday morning CNN. But I think we're going to do great in Iowa. I think we're going to do really great. But here's the story. I have never seen such press. I mean, my wife called. She said, are you okay, darling? How bad is it? How bad is it? They made it sound like it's the greatest defeat in history. The part is, is if they wanted, it wouldn't have even been mentioned. It wouldn't be a story. But then I said to myself, look. I have to talk. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice because I have to, I have to talk about it. You got the power. Ben Carson, thank you. Ben Carson is the one that's leading Iowa, supposedly. Okay. And I said, I got to talk about him. A friend of mine who happens to be a great, great athlete, he happens to be African-American. He calls himself black. He said, I'm black. I said, I can't say that. It's not politically correct. It's true. He said, Donald, you're the greatest trash talker that ever lived, and I never thought... He says this to me. He said, and I never thought I'd say it about a white guy. Can you believe this? And I said, I don't know if that's true or not, because I refuse to acknowledge. He said, when you said low energy for Bush, you defined him so incredibly. It was over. He can have $125 million in the bank, Donald. It's over. It was just defined. But I said, but Ben Carson is super low energy, right? It's super. He's super low. Super low energy. We need tremendous energy. We need tremendous energy. We need energy. So, Hillary Clinton the other day She said, I don't like Donald Trump's tone. I don't like his, his tone. Tone. Can you imagine my tone? My tone. Think of it. She doesn't like my tone. We have people, they're Christians, and their heads are being chopped off in the Middle East. We have people that are dying by the thousands all over this country. We have people that are being drowned in cages. It hasn't been like this since medieval times. It's true. Who would ever think? And she's talking about my tone. Think of it. Think of it. Think of it. We have to be politically correct. So they can chop off the heads of an American Christian. And we can't waterboard. It's not fair. No, it's not fair. No, no, think of it. Think of how, think of how crazy and how lopsided our country has become. Think of what's going on. 
Think of what's going on. Think of why we're not respected. Think about Sergeant Bergdahl, a traitor, a traitor. Think of it. He's a dirty, rotten traitor. Six people died going after him. They died. Six young, incredible, brave people died. The deal is, we get Trader Bergdahl, they get five of the best people that they have, that they've been after for ten years, they get five killers that are right now leading and back on the battlefield, trying to kill everybody, including you. And we get Bergdahl a traitor. Okay? We get Bergdahl. And then, two days ago it came out that Bergdahl, they don't want to put him in jail. You know in the old days, boom, firing squad. No, it's true. I love the Second Amendment. I love the Second Amendment. So two days ago, it comes out that Sergeant Bergdahl won't even have to go to jail. Oh, think of it. Where have we gone? Where have we gone? What's going on with our country? Okay? I'll tell you one thing. If I win, it's not going to be my most important job. Not if. Now, we have to say if. Hey, look. Look. They're all going, not if, when. All right. All right. Okay, I, I have a... You know what? The word should be if, but you know what? They're going crazy up here. They're saying when, when, when. So when. Okay, when. When. And I hope so, because I'll tell you, we can make our country so great again. We'll make it so great again. But I promise you, we will be reopening that Bergdahl disaster. We will be reopening it. It's going to be re A lot of things are going to be reopened. There are a lot of things going to be reopened. You're going to have a lot of things reopened. So, I went to my people, and just like Durrell, I got it for 170. Everyone thinks it's done. I said, let's make it 150. They say, how can you do that? You signed a contract. I did, but the place, just like that, we have deals with China that are done. Somebody said, well, they're signed. I said, that's okay. They violated every deal we ever made. No, they violated. That means they're in default. That means they're in default, okay? So I said to my people two weeks ago, I said, go back and tell me what is our trade imbalance with, I think, three countries. China, Japan, and Mexico. I just want to find out. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. So Mexico, and I love Mexico, and I love the Mexican people, but their leaders are too smart for our leaders. Ay, ay, ay. Our leaders are so stupid. They're so stupid. So with Mexico, we lose about $45 billion a year. Would you say that's a lot? But that's okay, because that's peanuts compared to what you hear. Japan, we have an imbalance of $70 billion a year, $70 billion, $70 billion. It, it's, most people don't even know what that is, what does that mean? The number is so massive, it's not even recoverable, but I can recover, but here's the beauty, and I, I love China, they buy my apartments, they give me $25 million. I do them like hotcakes, Bob, but China is the most unfair because, well, Japan's right there. You know, Japan sells us, they just devalue the hell out of their currency. You saw that, Japan. But China gave the biggest, greatest devaluation in the last two decades, meaning 20 years. The biggest devaluation. So I said, what's the trade imbalance? They told me Mexico first. I said, wow, that's a lot of money. Then they said Japan. I said, wow, that's even more money. I said, give it to me with China. Almost $400 billion a year we lose. How stupid are we? How we should be ashamed of ourselves. How stupid are we? And I don't blame China. I don't blame them at all. I have friends from China. They used to come up and see me and say, Oh, Donald, we can't believe. We can't believe that we get away with this. It's unbelievable. Your people, they are incompetent. But then I said, I'm running for president. They called me. No, we were only kidding. You're actually it's amazing. They had no idea I'd be revealing their conversation. They can't even believe they're going to win. First of all, when China sends us their goods, there's no tax, there's no nothing. 
when we send China, number one, they won't accept them. If they do accept them, they have massive taxes and tariffs. It's a one-way street. It's a one-way street. A friend of mine, great manufacturer, can't get his goods in. He, he manufactures great stuff. Can't get his goods in China. It calls me. I can't, I can't deal with these people. Then finally he gets them in. They charged him a tax that was so high, I can't tell you because nobody's going to believe how high it was. These are smart people. But I have people that are smarter. I have people. Sure. I have people. I mean, I have some of the great business people. They're all calling me. These guys, friends of mine, some enemies. I even have enemies calling. I have guys that are so smart, and some I don't like. Some I, I can't stand. Some are horrible people. Actually, I know one that's so bad as a human being. He's the worst human being I've ever met, but he's an unbelievable negotiator. I said, Irving, come on, you're going with us. And these are wealthy people. These are really wealthy people. And they're all calling me. They all want to get involved. I have a great guy, really great, great businessman, great everything. Carl Icahn. He called me. I want to get involved. I want to help. He doesn't want money. He doesn't want a salary. You know, all these people representing us, they want salary. They give $2,000 to somebody, and now they're supposed to be paid for the next eight years by some stupid politician. Okay? No, no. Carl Icahn wants to represent the country for nothing. Now, if I say, and he's a great guy, and he's a great, I don't care if he's a great guy, he's a great guy, but I don't care. Because I have others that aren't great guys, but they're great at what they do. I know the great ones, I know the bad ones, I know the guys that are overrated, you got some overrated. You got some that are highly overrated. I won't use them. I have some that nobody ever heard of that are better than all of them, they're great. We have the most talented people there are. This isn't going to be political. This isn't going to be political hacks. Now, if I tell Carl, go watch over China for me, Carl. Just watch over China. Trust me, good things are going to happen for us. Believe me, really good things are going to happen. I mean, we have a thing right now going on. It's called corporate inversion. Nobody knows what it is. but Companies have trillions of dollars in other countries. And we can't get it back into this country. You know that, right? You've been hearing about it. Trillions. They know the number is two and a half trillion. I say it's much higher than that. Nobody really knows. I think it's right. So at least two and a half trillion is offshore, all these different countries. And what we're doing is our companies are going to, and they've already started, leaving the United States and moving to those other countries to get their money. Well, but you can't blame them. To get their money and, and to get lower taxes. So I came up with a tax plan that cuts taxes way down, way down, for corporations, for, for the middle income people, for the middle income people, of which we don't have too many in this room, I can tell you. They're all upper middle income people and upper people, but for the middle income people, because the middle class in this country has been totally forgotten about. It's been totally forgotten about. So we're cutting corporate taxes. We're cutting taxes for the middle income. We're cutting a lot of things like carried interest. These guys, you know the hedge fund guys? They pick a stock. If it goes up, they're geniuses, they make a fortune. If it goes down, they find another job, okay? A lot of it's luck. So what happens is the Democrats and the Republicans both agree that we should bring them. Who cannot agree? For three and a half years they've agreed and they still can't make a deal. It's gridlock in Washington, it's lack of leadership in Washington, and we're going to stop it. We're going to stop it. Okay? We're going to stop it. The other day, and it's going to be amazing, we're going to have a dynamic, a really dynamic country. The other day, I watched a general being interviewed. And I said to a group before, why the hell is a general being interviewed on television? I don't want my generals being interviewed. I don't want them telling what we're doing, where we're going. Can you imagine General George Patton, who used to walk in a room with blood pouring out of his eyes? Do you think this guy's going to be interviewed on CNN? I don't think so. I mean, I'm watching this general be interviewed. And the first thing is that, and I love great generals. I love General MacArthur. You know, to this day, he had the highest marks. I'm a big fan of academics, believe it or not. 
but he had the highest marks in the history of West Point. Highest average. That's a, you know, smart guy. In fact, his biggest problem is he hated to listen to Dwight Eisenhower because Dwight, who was a great guy, but he was at the lower part of his class, and MacArthur was the smartest guy probably ever at West Point, at least according to academic. And he couldn't believe that he had to take orders from Ike. I mean, there's so many interesting stories. But could you imagine, could you imagine General Douglas MacArthur being on television saying the following? The question was by a very good man asking the questions. Said, what do you think of ISIS? Can we win? And the general looked at him and said, oh, it's going to be very tough. It's going to be very, very tough. I don't know. It's going to take a very, very long time. And I looked at this guy and I said, number one, he's a weak person. I, I, you know, I'm very good. You know, deals aren't deals. Deals are people. When you do deals, it's people, not deals. I, everybody always says, deals, deals are people. Remember it. I tell kids, deals are not deals. Deals are people. But I looked at this general. I said, I don't want him. I don't want him. I will find the smartest, and smart is very important, toughest. You know, we got rid of a very smart one. I'm not going to mention names. But we got rid of a guy, remember? Because he was using foul language to a magazine. He was tough and mean and nasty. And the troops were always, and we got rid of him because he was tough. I will find the General MacArthur. I will find the General George Patton. We got him. We got him. They may not be politically correct. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? But we're going to find them. And we're going to clean things up and we're going to we're going to have a great country again. We're going to have a great great and respected. We're going to have a respected country. So we have a lot to do. We will build the wall. We will build the wall. We have no choice. And by the way, people will come into our country, but they're going to come in legally. Legally. You know, I appreciate whoever the hell yelled out, will you build a wall? Because to be honest, in this group, I wasn't so sure I should be talking about walls. Does that make sense? See, tomorrow, tomorrow in Jacksonville, I can talk about walls. But, but in this one, I was a little hesitant to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, and I say this all the time, and people bear it out, a radio host, a Hispanic show in New York, said, you know, he was interviewed two weeks ago, he said, you know, my audience is all Hispanic. They love Trump. They love Trump. And let me tell you, let me tell you who wants to stop illegal immigration more than anybody? The Hispanics that are in our country legally. It's true. It's true. So, just to finish up, our country doesn't win anymore. You know that, right? Am I right? We don't win. When was the last time we had victory? We lose with China on trade. We lose with ISIS. We lose with Iraq. We don't know what we're doing. Iran just made the single greatest contract I have ever seen anybody make. We were represented by a man that should be ashamed of himself. A man, Secretary Kerry, that should get the hell off a bicycle. He's a guy falls off his bicycle during the negotiation, breaks his leg. We were represented by incompetent people. And it's not going to happen anymore, folks. It's not going to happen anymore. And let me tell you something. If and when I win, I'm not. <laughs> so, if and when I win, we are going to have 
so many victories. It's going to be so nice. It's going to be so nice. We're going to win on trade. We're going to win at everything. We're going to terminate Obamacare. We're going to we're going to terminate. It's going to be terminated. It's going to be replaced with something much better and much less expensive for you and for the country. Let me tell you, Obamacare was a dream for the insurance companies. They've made a fortune with Obamacare. They've made a fortune. And your premiums are up 40%, 50%, 55%. Your deductibles are through the roof. You'll never even be able to use it. It is so bad, we're going to repeal it and replace it with something great. Great.